And welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, the co-hosts of Liberadio, Mary Mancini, and syndicated conservative talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome, guys. We keep talking about how the summer is supposed to be a downtime for politics. It's been a very busy summer, and again this week, another week of town hall meetings. And uh, loud again, boisterous, but not really out of control. People really want to talk about this issue, don't they? Well, I think there's going to be plenty of talk uh, in the next couple of weeks before Congress gets back to Washington in, in September. It, it looks like kind of an interesting battle coming up because the Democrats are now complaining that they, they don't see the Republicans cooperating. They could pass this bill as is without a single Republican vote. So I'm not sure why they're blaming the Republicans when they've got super majorities in the Senate. They control the White House. They've got all the votes they need in the House. It's not Republicans that are their problem. It's the American people that don't want this bill that's their problem. And that seems to be part of the issue. They want to make sure that the American people have all the information before it is voted because the Democrats could vote it. Yeah, they could, and they're, but they're not. What they're doing is they're waiting to actually have the discussion, wait till sort of the uproar and the, uh, the, the people that aren't really interested in the discussion stop their, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know even how you would describe <laughs> it, their false, uh, their false outrage, and actually sit down and have the discussion. And it's, it's actually a testament to the presidential administration that they're not trying to steamroll this through, that they want to have the discussion and that they want the American people to, to understand the, the real aspects of the bill and not all the false information that's being perpetuated. Now, that's a bit disingenuous, though. The administration was trying to steamroll it. They wanted to vote before they left because they didn't want them to come out and hear what the American people had to say. So the fact is they were trying to steamroll it. They just didn't have the guts to to cast the votes. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if that if that's that's quite no that's actually well, you not. Well, look not, at the news reports. It was a deadline that they had. They wanted. They were insisting. Nancy Pelosi was insisting they do it before they left for the recess. The White House was insisting they were going to do it mm -hmm. before they left for the recess. They were trying to steamroll it. The American people reacted and they had to back off. The town hall meetings that they are having. So as we were talking about, some of the discourse seems to have backed off. The crowds have gotten bigger. People really want to have a discussion about this bill. That's a good aspect of this. That's fantastic because it, it's a discussion that really does need to happen. Uh, again, there's a lot of false information out there, and I think people at this point uh, are tired of it. They're hearing that things like death panels are uh, a, a big lie, and so they really want to get to the truth of the matter. And that's why I think you're seeing much larger crowds now, and you're not actually not seeing them. Uh, the majority of the crowds of people screaming down uh, their, their elected officials. As you said, the Democrats could approve this on their own. Now the president has signaled anyway that he may back off of the public option aspect, which prior to this was one of the stalwarts of his campaign when he ran for president. Nancy Pelosi is saying she cannot pass a bill without the public option aspect. So there's this divide well, within the Democratic Party. It's not clear where party. the administration is because you had the president say, as you saw in that clip earlier, that it's just a small sliver, it's not that important. Then Kathleen Sebelius, the Health and Human Services Secretary, comes out and says virtually the same thing that is backing off of the public option. Uh, you've got members of Congress, members of the U.S. Senate that are saying we, can, we need to drop that. The White House comes back and says, no, it's still an essential element. So it's not really clear what the plan is from their standpoint. And now they've dropped the death panels that weren't in there. So, so the death panels that weren't in there are now being dropped. Uh, you heard Lincoln Davis talking about the fact that he doesn't want to see coverage for illegal aliens in the bill. That'd be great. There's some amendments that the Democrats have voted down that would assure that. They don't want uh, abortion to be included. The Associated Press acknowledges that abortion is included in this bill. There are amendments that could pull that out. In fact, Congressman Bart Gordon uh, voted against an amendment that would have withdrawn abortion from being funded in this bill. So I think uh, Mary's right. We need to get the truth. We need to stop the false information, and the White House ought to stop dispensing the false information. I, I have no idea even where to begin with that. <laughs> there is so much untruth in what in what you just said. The death panels are not death panels. Uh, they are actually. But they have been withdrawn from the bill. Yes, they have been withdrawn from the bill because not because of what they actually are. They've been withdrawn from the bill because of all the misinformation about them that's come out there, and the, and the truth of the matter of of these end-of-life discussions, right. which are very important, which is what people want to have with their doctors, that's what was in there, was pulled because of people like Sarah Palin lying and calling them death panels. That was the reason why. Number two, there's no, there's, there's no federal money that goes towards insuring, unfortunately, undocumented workers. Um, these people are economic refugees, and they come to this country, and they come to this country for a reason, to better their life. And there, there's nothing in the bill, though, unfortunately, again, that allows for them to use uh, uh, government-run health care. Um, and, you know, if you want to talk about abortion, um, let's talk about the real way to reduce the number of abortions, which is to reduce the number of unintended pregnancies. Um, and that's what we should be working for. Uh, you know, there are people that say that they're pro-life, that as soon as a baby is born, they don't really care anymore what happens to that child, or they don't really care what happens uh, in a situation that uh, threatens the life of the mother. 
um, you know, people that really are pro-life think about this comprehensively, think about this uh, from all different angles. And again, the best way that we could actually work towards abortion, uh, to reducing the number of abortions, is to reducing the number of unintended pregnancies. And that includes, you know, giving women comprehensive reproductive health care. And men too, not just women. And that is inc what's included in this bill, the and public, what should be included in this bill. The public option aspect still seems to be the break or no break point of this and the president has given mixed signals on this Nancy Pelosi again saying the Democrats will not pass it without that happening. You know that's I, I don't know if I agree with that because I think that the, that's a media driven story I think that they came when, when Catherine Sebelius, Kathleen Sebelius came out and said what she said and when the president said what mm -hmm. he said what they, were in, what they were intending to say is that this is a big bill, a comprehensive bill that's just one aspect of it. Uh, the media had a slow mm -hmm. you know news week that week, or news day that week and it decided to say um, with I'm sure some Republican and conservative support trying to uh, divide uh, liberals from Democrats came out and said, oh, now they're backing off the public option. So what do you have on Monday is you have all the liberals and the progressives up in arms because the president's backing off from that. It's a fake story. It's not real. It's part of the process. It will continue to be as we go forward. Noted Republican liberal Democrat Senator Kent Conrad in North Dakota noted that the bill will not pass the Senate if it has the public option. So another one of those raving uh, Republicans, Democrat Senator Kent Conrad uh, siding uh, with the truth on this issue. Well, you know, not Senator have misinformation too and I'm sure that he will come around once it, it once he uh, realizes what uh, the real aspects of this bill we've got are. about 30 seconds left are we going to get to a point where something is voted on and will something pass in regards to health care reform well I think everybody's for health care reform the question is whether or not we want to turn it over to the British style Canadian style system that is not working there and shouldn't imbo be imposed here in this country we certainly shouldn't follow the worst of the worst case scenarios that we've seen in those countries we ought to do health care reform that works and there are other alternatives that would do that without turning it over to the government we're, we're going to hopefully get to the point where we pass health care reform. And, and the, the, most, the best thing that's happening is for the first time I think you're hearing Republicans, conservatives actually say what Steve just said, is that we need health care reform. And that is brilliant. That's has, that hasn't happened ever before. So, yes, I think we will get to it eventually. Very man. Steve Gill, appreciate your insights. Stay with us. This week continues after this.